Thank you for that kind introduction, Dana. I'm Robin Gilthorpe, CEO of Terracotta. And Terracotta is a firm entirely dedicated to the core principles of, of big data. So here it comes, big data, fast. I'm going to share a different perspective on big data, um, offer a few of the many ways that big data can impact your world in positive ways, encourage you to change your perspective, think about new opportunities, and potentially change your roadmap for the future. We're not just changing the technology landscape, but also what is possible in our organizations and at a personal level. And that is what makes the topic of big data so exciting for us all. Big data is a secular phenomenon, not a fashion, not a fad, not a trend. Karl Heinz mentioned yesterday the digitization of the world has set us on a path of generating, accessing, and analyzing more, more information than ever. 90% of the world's data has been created since 2010. And we're not going back. Because it's both a driver of and driven by the other three of the so-called four forces we've been hearing about, shaping 21st century technology, business, and society, mobile first, social networks, and cloud computing, going from millions of human sources to billions, from monthly or daily updates to the pace of a Twitter feed. But in fact, the industrial internet is soon going to eclipse all in human information sources. RFID, smart meters, engine sensors. Pretty soon your fridge in your, in your kitchen will have more telemetry than recent space missions. The world is producing two and a half zettabytes a day of new data. That's two and a half billion terabytes, or about the same amount as all humans consumed in the entirety of 20, 2008, new every day in 2012. So what kind of information do you wish that you had? How will you make it usable and valuable? Well, as I hinted in the last slide, big data has become a hot topic. But more than that, it's become a business imperative. In fact, in many industries, from automotive to heavy industry, to retail, to gaming, to transportation and logistics, products, services, and offerings have become inextricably intertwined with the associated data. It was all the way back in 1978 that Fred Smith, founder of FedEx, said, the information about the package is as important as the package itself. And as you can see from these stats from Deloitte and Forrester, businesses are taking big data very seriously. And so they might, because big data is not merely on the business agenda, it's an integral part of company performance. Despite its newness, big data is already generating real returns for real businesses that are investing in big data initiatives. They're seeking returns from efficiency, from competition, and from innovation. In fact, McKinsey said in a recent report, it is increasingly the case that much of modern economic activity, innovation, and growth simply couldn't take place without data. This is what's driving an increasing pace of projects being kicked off, as further supported by these data from Wakefield and Nucleus. In fact, Deloitte says that the average amount enterprises are spending on these kind of projects is 10 to 15 million. And a year ago, Forrester identified that a quarter of IT professionals surveyed said they had a big data project in production, and another 18% said that they were already in the pilot phases for a new big data initiative. Now, having said that, even big data pioneers will tell you that their current initiatives are only the tip of the iceberg. They've barely begun to harness the power of the data that they already collect. And equally, 60% of businesses acknowledge that they capture more data than they can actually use. So there's much more to do. But with that work, much greater opportunity. So why is there so little usage? There's so little usage of it. Well, there's simply so much of it. It's overwhelming. The tools can't address the volume. They can't help them use that in a time frame of value. And finally, of course, they fall prey to existing barriers, such as departmental level of ownership, formats, practices, and the rest. Big data is pervasive, but without the ability to extract value from it, it's just a problem to be managed. 
One element of the problem is that there's a mismatch between motivations and expectations of business and technology executives. Forrester told us that 75% of IT professionals say the data volume is the main requirement driving big data initiatives. But 82% of business executives feel the issue isn't so much the volume as the need to analyze and act on it in real time. <clears throat> Just one example around mobile first. MIT recently reviewed the ability to estimate shopping patterns before the retailer could gain that same information from the ERP system. So how did they do this? From mobile phone location data, they could infer shopper numbers in the stores, parking lots, and estimate sales values in real time. Now, in theory, and so it seems also in practice, if you get this right, you can better understand customers, unlock new revenue streams, and overtake the competition. But if we keep approaching data management the same way, <clears throat> we're going to keep struggling with the fact that the data has changed, and it's not changing back. So these are the common big data problems. Absolute amount of data, the speed at which it arrives, every format under the sun, and how to extract value. Traditional data management is preventing enterprises from quickly accessing, processing, and extracting business value from that data. So we need a new generation of data management, what we call DM2. And Terracotta is a key element of delivering on that vision. Data management infrastructure must simultaneously address all those four, four challenges, volume, velocity, variety, and value. That's why we're seeing a shift from having this main load borne by the database to the main load in memory, taking access times from three milliseconds from a hardware perspective to 50 nanoseconds. That's roughly equivalent between the difference between a, sec a day and a second. But big data access alone isn't so much the problem as access to insight. Why do I say that? Well, let me just relate a, a personal conversation, probably in the, in the vein of uh, Dana's comments about Gene Simmons, that sixth grade teacher. I have two kids, one's a very good student, 17. The 14-year-old boy, not so much. So I got the inevitable question, many of the parents in the room will have had this, why do I need to revise for this test? Why don't I just look up everything on the internet? Probably much like you, you're a little stumped. What do you say? Well, <clears throat> fortunately, I knew two things about my son. He'd shared with me from very early on, from the age of six, that he had two goals in life. One was to be an inventor, and the other was to be rich. Not bad. <clears throat> the key, so my answer was, because you have to learn stuff to invent stuff. You have to learn stuff to invent stuff. This is why. You can't create insight from what you can't hold in memory. Think of the pre-IT world. Imagine you hold two books describing two different theories or concepts, and you lay them on the table together. You have to open those books, consume the thoughts, hold it in memory, analyze, synthesize, all in memory, and work out that intersection to create new insights. It's the same for humans and for computers. So why learn? To innovate faster and to perform better. But isn't the memory we already have enough to do that? Well, no. The quantity, those insights that depend on all the two-factor combinations have already been discovered, much to the disappointment of my own career as an inventor. They're not novel anymore. They're not innovative. Now you look at 22 and 222 factor combinations. So you need a lot more data in memory to be able to innovate. Now, fortunately, Terracotta doesn't find more data a scary requirement. We're the leader in in-memory data management for the enterprise. Our organizational DNA is dedicated to that premise. And our team even sets the standards in this emerging space, for example, JSR 107. Leading enterprises all over the world put their most valuable data in our products. And in return, we provide modern, enterprise-tested data management that delivers extreme performance at any scale. Our flagship pro product line is called Big Memory. It takes large-scale data sets, that's capital B, capital D, big data, and puts them in memory. 
We do that for three key reasons. Scale, speed, and simplicity. Big memory is unique in the world of data management and the world of in-memory solutions. Usually, you can have lots of data at slow speeds, or little bunches of data at high speeds, or even any data at fast speeds, but only sometimes. Unfortunately, at other times, generally at the times when you can least afford it, you get much longer latencies. But Terracotta does big data extremely fast and with consistent low latency and high availability. Oh, yes, and we make it simple. There are pieces of our technology here at Terracotta that are very clever. But one of the beauties of our approach is that we significantly hide that complexity. We deliberately make this as easy to implement and use as possible. Big Memory works with any Java application. It's embedded in web methods and other applications. It works with state-of-the-art, off-the-shelf commodity hardware. No tuning, special hardware, or skills are required. We have products that snap in with two lines of config and scale up by typing a new number into the parameters. So this layer, this platform, is a key enabler of the agility of which Wolfram also spoke. Agility in runtime through speed. Agility between runtimes through ease and flexibility to add new streams at scale, whatever they may be. So simple and so powerful, big data, big memory has become the competitive advantage for big brands who depend on Terracotta to deliver big value from that world of big data. In fact, you personally already use big memory in travel or telecommunications industries, in paying for your online shopping or arranging for its shipping across town or across the globe. It's happening today in millions of installations. It truly is becoming the default platform for in-memory systems to address the big data challenges that we, that we have in faster business. So why are there no bank robbers anymore? Well, because the cash in the till isn't the big score anymore. By now, one in three US citizens has experienced credit card fraud in the last five years. You can buy a name and a password to an online bank account for $1,000. Data from a credit card so you can accurately print a mag stripe for $80. When these kind of threats and opportunities abound, it isn't just about survival of the fittest, as Carl Heinz said yesterday, it becomes about survival of the fastest. So bearing that in mind, and the risks that that creates for card issuers, holders, and merchants, here's an example of our ability to scale to huge data set sizes in memory, <coughs> helped, um, and how that helped one of our customers in the cards and payments uh, sector. So at what time is speed more critical than if somebody has your card, or in fact that $80 copy of your card, and is shopping with it. In this environment, 45 minutes, enough time to be watching that new TV at home, is just too long. Because of the volume of consumer and transaction data that they collect, our customer could only put a couple of days' worth of data into their algorithm for fraud <clears throat> to even hit that 45-minute window. They decided they needed both more precision and more speed. We solved that for them. Within eight weeks, and right before the busiest shopping day of the year, they deployed big memory, dramatically expanded the data they could address and the evaluations that they could run, <coughs> and they haven't looked back since. They're now able to detect fraud within seconds before the fraudster leaves the store. They meet their SLAs. Merchants and cardholders are happy. They've prevented hundreds of millions of dollars worth of fraudulent charges, as well as that whole painful process that we've been through for terminating cards and notifying customers and so on, and protecting their brand. None of this would be possible without the ability to scale to mass market sizes. Now, traveling across the globe to another Terracotta client, collecting, analyzing, and distributing satellite and sensor data from around the world in real time is a huge challenge. We're seeing it in all those industries I mentioned earlier, from automotive, to heavy industry and beyond. This client had a vision of how to use location data and the patterns of location data from large numbers of, con of consumers to help other consumers. This is brilliant. You set it up, 
the customer's customers do the work, they don't realize, and you have a new value add. It's crowdsourcing of a sort. You have their device in your car, and others do too. And you are, say, doing 75 miles an hour southbound on I-95. But then it seems you're doing 35 or 25 or a stationary. And so are a dozen other customers, maybe. And then your location data is shared anonymously, aggregated in big memory, analyzed, coded, anonymized, and served to those other users. The roadway changes color in everybody's display from green to yellow to red. The route time's adjusted, fast and smart. With what we've come to think of by now as a relatively small amount of data to start with, around 200 gigabytes, this European client commenced a transformation of their ability to scale to the growth in their data. And they're able to deliver it in real time more accurately and efficiently than ever before. They're able to re improve reliability and most of all responsiveness to new updates with reduced variation in the latency. This is a great example of where the data being fast enough for the relevant decision cycle drives real value for the business. So a final example. We've actually heard a little about it this morning. This telecommunications firm, like many companies, had multiple back-end systems that were required to pull together a customer's record. When a customer dialed in, it would take 20 or 30 seconds for the record to come up. That's an eternity if you just want a simple piece of information from the customer service rep. That slow data access was preventing their growth and their expansion, and indeed their new services sales. So by putting all of their customer data in memory, the company was able to de-emphasize call center support and push more people to the website. They're able to cross-sell to customers online and via their phones in ways that they couldn't before. They took support costs down from $15 to 50 cents they <clears throat> shifted call center staff to other roles, streamlined their IT infrastructure, reduced their CPU and licensing investments. Big Memory's ability to easily manage data in memory in multiple forms simplified their data management, reduced their costs, and helped them to achieve double-digit growth. So as by now you've heard, there are many ways that we can impact our clients' businesses positively. But to do this, you need that data fast. Competing in the 21st century means survival of the fastest. Instead of one or the other, in-memory also means you don't have to choose between defense and offense. You can manage to your current needs infinitely better. You can serve emerging needs, for example, social, because social is about a conversation. A good conversation, and a good conversation isn't punctuated by long, awkward pauses. And at the same time, you can gain breathing room and budget for innovating, so you can serve customers and beat competitors in, enti beat competitors in entirely new ways. We highly recommend that you do try this at home. Hopefully, I gave you some thought starters today. If you have any of the following on your agenda, large web presence and surging demands, major call centers and a desire to optimize those, and risk management, particularly in fraud, market risk, and those other fast risk type of challenges, then Terracotta and Big Memory could be a great way to go. But there is more to it. And very important, don't forget that if you're a Web Methods customer, you'll benefit from embedded Big Memory anyway. So just do a little more. Do a little more. We're here to share ideas on how this approach can actually help you address the brave new world. So please stop by the booth at the Solutions Hall or contact us directly on the website. And you're also most welcome to join our track session presentation on big memory later today. Thank you very much.